Hello everyone! Today I want to give you an overview on existing graph neural network libraries for Python. The basic principles of these libraries are all quite similar, but they have slight differences here and there, and I hope that this video helps you to find your most suitable tool. The first library on this list is PyTorch Geometric. As the name implies, it's built upon PyTorch and allows to write and train graph neural networks. PyTorch Geometric represents graphs as data objects that hold several attributes. In this case, we have the node feature vectors x, the adjacency information edge index, edge feature vectors called edge etcher, and finally the labels for the graph object. In this case, it's for node classification. Furthermore, there can be other properties such as 3D coordinates, test and train masks, or faces for the graph. Graph objects can then be added to datasets, and these datasets can be passed to data loaders that allow to perform batching and sampling. The GNNs can then be composed of the layers included in PyTorch Geometric, such as in this example the graph convolution layer. The rest is just regular PyTorch, the only thing that's really different is that you use these GNN layers. I thought it makes sense to compare some stats among the libraries and therefore we will extend this table with the information of each package I present in this video. PyTorch Geometric was founded in 2017, has around 600,000 pip installs and 13k stars on GitHub. It uses a PyTorch backend and can be used as high and low level library because you can either write your own layers or use existing modules. It provides a great documentation with plenty of examples and I counted 56 graph convolutional layers and 28 pooling layers. It supports heterogeneous graphs and batching or sampling using the data loaders. Finally, there are around 70 integrated datasets that can be used for testing. Besides that, it provides a lot of additional functionalities such as model tracking with GraphGym or multi-GPU support. The next library is the Deep Graph library, and the speciality about this library is that it is backend agnostic. This means you can build GNNs in PyTorch, MXNet, or TensorFlow. Graphs are represented as DGL graph objects, similarly as in PyTorch Geometric. The attribute names are slightly different and more flexible, as you can add custom information to all of the nodes and edges using NData and EData. This also includes things like test train masks, the labels, and node or edge features. One thing that is great about these DGL graphs is that you can also query the graph structure. For example, if you're interested in the degrees of the nodes, you can simply call a function for that. Or if you want to get the connections of a specific node in the graph, you can also easily do that. So overall, this graph object is very powerful and provides a lot of useful utilities. Besides that, you also have a data loader and samplers that allow you to efficiently train a graph neural network. This includes parallel and distributed training as well as multi-GPU support. Sample code for a GNN architecture in PyTorch could look like this. You import a GNN layer and simply build your GNN architecture with it. In the forward pass, you then get a single graph object for which you have access to all of the assigned attributes. Let's have a look at some stats. DGL was founded in early 2018, has already around 1.7 million downloads and 8,000 GitHub stars. As mentioned, it is backend agnostic and currently supports three backends. You can also write your own GNN layers and therefore it's both high and low level. A documentation with a lot of examples is available, there is even a Chinese version of it. When it comes to the number of examples, it heavily depends on the backend you use, for TensorFlow, for instance, only a few code samples are available. I counted less convolutional and pooling layers compared to PyTorch Geometric. This also depends on the backend you use. I reported the numbers for PyTorch here, which has the most layer types. Heterogeneous graphs with different node and edge types are supported, and also plenty of data loaders and samplers are available. I counted 22 datasets included in the library, and finally some additional features like distributed training are available. Finally, I want to mention that DGL benchmarks itself against PyTorch Geometric and also other libraries with regards of speed and memory consumption. As you can see on this overview, both libraries have their strengths and weaknesses. 
The next library is Spectral, which is a Keras and TensorFlow 2 based GNN library. First of all, I have to say that the documentation is extremely beginner friendly and there are lots of visualizations that explain how the different components of the library work. To that end, if you are new to GNNs and prefer to work with TensorFlow, I can truly recommend it. The representation of graphs is straightforward. A holds the adjacency information, X the node features, E the edge features and Y the node or graph level labels. One important remark is that the focus of this library are node and graph level prediction tasks. I haven't seen any resources on edge level prediction problems and I'm not sure if it's possible. Like in all other libraries, the graphs are wrapped in a dataset object, which is passed to a data loader. This is a code example of a simple GCN model. You can see that it inherits from a Keras model and then simply uses the spectral GNN layers. Spectral was founded in 2019, has around 110,000 pip downloads and 2k GitHub stars. It uses a Keras backend and can be used in a high and low level fashion. The documentation is very straightforward and there are 17 convolutional layers and 10 pooling layers listed at the moment. I haven't found support for heterogeneous graphs and again it's not really suitable for edge level prediction tasks. There are different data loaders available but those are very basic so if you plan to do more complex sampling it will most likely not be supported. Finally there are currently 10 datasets included in the library and the special feature is that it's extremely beginner friendly. GraphNets is Google DeepMind's graph network library and is based on TensorFlow and Sonnet. It's a bit more abstract and low level than the previous libraries and generally it can be seen as a generalization for many GNNs. Overall this library provides a framework to define functions on graph structured data. They also call it graph nets and not graph neural nets because the functions defined on the graph structured data can be arbitrary. The graph objects are represented as Python dictionaries and can consist of edge features, node features and global features. The adjacency information for the directed graph is encoded in sender and receiver indices. A batch of a graph can be stored in a graph's tuple object, which is the expected input for the graph network modules. The main building block of this library are the graph net modules such as shown in this code. They allow you to define up to three learnable functions for the edges, the nodes and the global attributes. With Sonnet you can pass in a neural network, like a multi-layer perceptron in this example. And besides the graph network modules there are some others like self-attention or deep sets. Overall I think this library is addressed for more research oriented usage because it allows you to highly customize the operations applied on a graph. GraphNets was released in August 2018, so far has around 50,000 downloads and 5k stars on GitHub. It's based on TensorFlow and Sonnet and compared to the other libraries it's rather low level. There's no real documentation but some readme files and Jupyter notebooks which are well documented. The library has 7 modules which we could call convolutional layers in this context. I haven't found any implementations of pooling layers. Also heterogeneous graphs and more advanced data loaders and samplers are not available. No pre-installed datasets come with the library. A special feature is that the library is very customizable and allows to have full control over the way how messages are combined. This is an example from the paper they have published and as you can see the graph information can be combined in many different ways. So these are the four biggest GNN libraries for Python which are currently out there. Besides that I want to mention a couple of additional packages that might be interesting for you. If you work with chemical data like molecules, DeepCam provides a lot of functionalities and comes with implementations of the most common GNN modules like graph attention networks. DeepCam also provides many helpful functions that convert molecules into graphs and furthermore supports several backends like Keras and PyTorch. Dive into Graphs is a rather high level library that implements many GNN modules including generative graph models or explainability methods. 
TF2 GNN is a GNN library for TensorFlow 2, which was created by Microsoft. The same researchers have also built PT GNN, which is based on PyTorch. Inspired by PyTorch Geometric, there exists also TensorFlow Geometric, which supports many different GNN layers. Finally, DeepSnap is built by researchers from Stanford University and is closely connected with PyTorch Geometric. It has pretty much the same syntax, but provides several extensions, such as graph manipulations during training or transfer learning. So, as you can see, luckily there are many great libraries out there. For me personally, PyTorch Geometric was the best match because it's very powerful yet simple to use. That's all for this video and I hope this gave you a good overview to get started with your GNN project. Have a nice day and see you soon in a future video.